in three core. Excellent. Okay. So welcome, folks. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at resource ready. These are resources brought to you by um, Mass Civic Learning Coalition. So one of the things that we're going to be looking at today, uh, a, a bunch of different aspects will be uh, brought to you by uh, several folks. So my name is Casey Cullen. Uh, I work at West, Westboro Public Schools. I'm a high school teacher at, in Westboro, also past president of Massachusetts Council for Social Studies. Uh, David, if you'd like to introduce yourself real quick, which we'll can go down the line. Yeah. I'm Dave Buchanan. I'm the director of Massachusetts programs with iCivics and a former high school teacher as well. Lizzie. I am I'm Lizzie Carroll. I'm the program director for Facing History in New England, Facing History in Ourselves, also a former high school teacher. Kristen. Hi, I'm Kristen Gallus. I'm the project manager for education development at the Songus Industrial History Center at Lowell National Historical Park. And I have my degree in secondary history education, but never taught. Wonderful. And Jason. Hi, everyone. Uh, Jason Lofty from Generation Citizen, program director at the Massachusetts site, also a former teacher, uh, high school, as well as reading specialist. Great. Joe. Hi, Joe Hoffman from Bridgewater State University. I've been leading up our project and our efforts to put civics education micro-credentials available for uh, teachers and uh, former dean of, of the College of Education and Health Sciences at Bridgewater and also past public school teacher. Wonderful. And Michael? I'm Zoom user 25. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm Michael Blau. I'm, I'm uh, the uh, Senior Program Manager for Partnerships and Engagement with the Democratic Knowledge Project. I've been there for about three years, um, taught um, civics, gov, and AP gov um, for about five years. Um, so good to be with you all. Excellent. So folks, today's uh, agenda, uh, after those introductions, we want to go uh, through, just talk about a couple things, teaching for today, the mission uh, slash the history accomplishments of the MCLC current work uh, on collaborations with DESI, and then uh, focus on teaching and learning. That's really what we want to get into today. Uh, want to hopefully allow for uh, some time at the end for Q&A, but also if there are questions, please ask uh, throughout. Okay, so we'll go for teaching for today first here. Um, one of the uh, things that we're looking at is the urgent nature of civics and civic education. If you turn on the news, uh, you have these conversations, whether they be around the, uh, the dinner table, uh, whether they be out at cookout, uh, the topics that we teach about um, and that we work on every day in our classrooms are, are, are on the forefront of everybody's minds. And the conversation has come back time and time again to what is also going on in schools, what is uh, uh, being accomplished in the state of Massachusetts in particular, as far as civic education is concerned. And so this is something that we uh, have been keenly focused on at MCLC. And that's one of the reasons why we initially formed the coalition uh, to address uh, these issues. We'll do the next slide. So one of the things that we looked at uh, and have looked at with students who receive a quality civic education, uh, more likely to be engaged in political life work on the community issues, greater confidence to speak publicly and complete college um, and development, uh, develop uh, employable skills. And uh, seen this time again in those of you that ha have taught uh, and engaged with these students, uh, these students may not be the A++ students, they may not uh, uh, garner some wonderful GPAs, but these students that really get interested and engaged in these topics as they go forward, make a really true impact on uh, many organizations. So uh, to keep it brief though, I just like to refer back to one of the uh, quotes, uh, John Wooden, um, Hall of Fame basketball coach uh, said of his team, they said, hey coach, how's the team looking this year? And he said, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell you in 10 years. And it kind of struck him funny. Like, what do, you, what do you mean? He goes, I'll tell you in 10 years because I'll tell you how these folks turn out because what I'm doing right now, you're, you're not going to necessarily see the impact for a while. And I think that's what we do as civic educators. Uh, you don't necessarily see it that next day in class, um, 
but one of the, the best experiences I, I've had is to run into former students at the EMK Center or uh, involved in student government politics in the college campuses and universities. Kids did, could care less in high school, but decided to get involved and, and, and take a role um, because of the things that happened in that classroom setting. Uh, those are th probably some of the most powerful moments. And uh, that's really why it's so important. So one of the things we, we like to also promote is that we are planting seeds. We are not picking fruit. Okay. So this is one of the, the, the missions uh, that MCLC is greatly involved with. Thank you. Next slide. David, if you so want to go. The, the uh, coalition was founded in 2017, founded by iCivics, by Generation Citizen, and by the JFK Library Foundation. Um, we're now an organization of 35 organizations across the state and uh, really represent an array of approaches to civic education. Um, we're representing not only geographic differences, but also very different strategies and very different focus areas. Um, so I think we, you know, we think of ourselves in working together and the, the work we've done over the last three years. And I think that we're really uh, representing well the, the model of how we'd like to see civic life um, carried out throughout our society, really, that here's all these different organizations that have come together with this shared message and shared goals. And we've really managed to work very cooperatively to really make some uh, impact over the last couple of years. So um, our uh, particular mission and what really brought us all together was to really make sure that civic education and engagement in Massachusetts happens in a quality way um, and we, we really uh, started in 2017 at a time in the state's evolution around civic education where there was a new framework of under development, a re revision of the 2003 framework to what has become a 2018 one, uh, as well as state legislation that has now become the civics law. So our mission was really to provide a unified voice from all these different organizations to really promote high quality civic education across the state and really with a, a clear mission about making sure that happens for all students in all districts, in all regions of the state. Because we know that civic education really is not done uh, uniformly uh, across the country. And many students, who, particularly those who are particularly disadvantaged, don't have the advantages of a really good quality civic education. So we're trying to make sure that happens here in Massachusetts and uh, have really made some pretty significant progress. Um, the coalition can't take credit for all that's happened in terms of policy across the state, uh, in terms of the, the new framework and in terms of the new civics law. But I think we were really instrumental in providing the support and the unified vision to make a lot of that come together. So we've really been helpful on the policy front and also in terms of the implementation front. Um, just this past year, as you all know, um, there's been a million and a half dollars committed by the state to the Civic Project Trust Fund uh, that has funded grants and an evaluation of civic education across the state and many other projects. Um, so we've seen some real advances in the commitment from the state, as well as uh, what we're now currently doing for the current year of really advocating to shore that up further and make sure that even during COVID-19 and all the economic downturn that we've seen that the progress we've seen over the last couple of years continues. And part of that has been also to create a separate fund for private funders so that we start to get some support from the private sector as well as the public sector. So uh, in terms of this past year, there was a uh, again, a million and a half dollars available for funding the various projects that I mentioned, um, but there's also very clear need for additional funding. And uh, you can see here in the diagram here that over a million dollars of grant proposals to the state for supporting civic educators in many of the districts that were not funded uh, still remains out there and those teachers still need that support. So we're really busy this year to try to continue to make the case for continued funding, at least level funding to make sure that the um, the support for teachers is there and, and we really get to the place that uh, Casey was describing at the, the opening of the session here. So 
So, uh, in it, as I mentioned, we've been very instrumental in creating this uh, separate fund for private funders and have actually had some commitments made to that fund, uh, but we're very actively seeking additional funding for this next year uh, to continue the work that I just described. Uh, we're also working very closely with the Department of Ed to support equitable implementation. Um, and uh, the current work actually may be, is likely to be that we'll be also hosting some of the workshop sessions that were recorded from the DESE conference back in last month on our website. So there'll be a, an additional reason to visit the coalition website to see some of that material as well. Uh, in addition to all that, we've also launched over the last year a statewide resource hub on our website. And again, the, the link to that website is on the front page of this, this uh, presentation. Um, and we'll, it's also at the very end of the session as well. Uh, that resource page was set up last year, particularly during the, the uh, closure of schools and the turn, sudden turn of all schools to remote learning. So we saw a need for making sure that the resources that we have available as various organizations were made available to educators in a timely way and organized by grade span so that teachers would have the ability to use those effectively. Um, we also created a section on that page for students and families to, again, to support teach, uh, parents at home who are desperately trying to, to keep their kids engaged in some educational and learning work as they, uh, they go through this COVID-19 uh, scenario that we're all living through these days. So uh, I mentioned earlier that we are, work very in, in close coordination with the department. Um, we have we have quarterly meetings with the department and continue to, to have a really good relationship with them uh, in supporting the projects they, that they have underway and also communicating some of the work that we have underway as well. So um, I'm gonna shift, shift over from representing the coalition for a moment and talk very briefly about some of the resources available through iCivics. And my colleagues here that we're sharing the session with today will follow up with with uh, sharing some of the resources from their various organizations as well. Um, iCivics is uh, celebrating its 10th year and we're, we've been very uh, successful across the country. We've had over 6 million students actually using our resources across the country. Uh, in terms of the focus on Massachusetts, we actually have a Massachusetts portal, which is a, a, a place on our site that organizes many of the materials that we have available to address the particular needs of Massachusetts teachers. So in particular, we have scope and sequences available for the grade eight Massachusetts civics course, as well as a separate scope and sequence for other grades. Um, we have a workbook particularly designed to support the instruction around state and local government here in Massachusetts, <clears throat> which is um, topic seven in the the grade eight course. We also recently came out with um, material around Supreme Court cases that are particularly relevant to those that are listed in the great grade eight course as well, as well as many supporting cases, particularly related to equity and uh, racial justice issues as well. So a good resource for teachers to, to turn to around that. We have a number of other resources posted for civics projects to help guide the work through the six stages for civics projects here in Massachusetts. And coming in December, we'll be releasing a new workbook uh, around civics action projects, particularly to support teachers with those six stages and particular activities to uh, provide a kind of step-by-step -step process for doing that work. So the Massachusetts portal is a good place to turn to if you uh, log into our site and get a, a free educator account there, you can, you'll be directed right directly to that. Um, in addition, given the circumstances that we're all living through right now with remote learning, uh, we've also reorganized many of our materials to create this remote learning toolkit, which again was designed not only for teachers, but also for parents to provide a pretty self-sufficient set of materials for students to work on on their own without a lot of guidance, because we certainly know that's the situation these days. And incorporated in that toolkit is a game odyssey that uh, is a series of games on particular themes with related lessons so that students again can start to remain engaged with civic education and civic learning in this time. 
Um, an additional section here is the iCivics election headquarters. My guess is that many on this, this session are well aware of those resources, but uh, we have posted there many of the games that relate particularly to the election, the win the White House game about conducting a presidential campaign, cast your vote, which is about more of an election, a local election focus, and then executive command and newsfeed defenders, other games, newsfeed defenders, particularly about media literacy. Great game to check out during media literacy week this week. Um, in addition on that page, we have a number of infographics, which are very useful, particularly through remote learning to, to have visuals that help students focus in on the content that you're trying to teach, particularly about the, the presidential campaign, but also other issues like the uh, gaining the vote for women, uh, around the um, financial support for uh, our campaigns and how expensive campaigns really are. In addition, on the headquarters page, you'll find lesson plans, web quests, which are a pre-vetted series of websites on particular topics so students conduct, can conduct research in an organized and structured way. Um, there's a Students Power Elections resource, which was just recently came out with uh, in collaboration with a group of students actually to create that, which really walks students through the process of how you vote and how to be an informed voter and also to get engaged in issues that are related to uh, being an informed voter in our system here. Um, I just heard today that there's been 17,000 downloads of that resource just in the last two months since it was released. So pretty impressive and I think filling a need for sure. Um, there's on-demand PD and I'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment, but focusing in on primary sources and teaching controversial issues and then there's some of these other resources that are listed here, blogs, as well as access, particularly to the Teaching the 2020 Election Facebook page, which is a great resource to stay, stay current and to share some of your, your own ideas and own your own practices with other teachers. So these are a sample of some of the infographics that I mentioned a moment ago. Um, and you'll see off to the left, bottom left there, there's a new one there about gerrymandering, which is like, could imagine using that even after this presidential election as a, a way to start to address some racial justice is, issues particularly. And then of course there's the peaceful transition um, infographic which um, all of us may need more information about in the near future, who knows, we'll see. So infographics a great resource to, to turn to during this remote learning period. So I just wanna dig in for a moment uh, before I hand it off to Lizzie um, for Facing History to talk a little bit about some of our resources around controversial issues and teaching controversial issues. Um, we certainly live in a time where there's no shortage of those for sure. Um, and it's, it's really unfortunate to hear that many teachers are actually avoiding teaching controversial issues, particularly around the election. Um, and we know there's a lot of pressure on all of you as teachers to particularly given the remote learning circumstances, you sometimes feel like you have parents leaning over your shoulder, telling you how to teach and so forth. But um, something that can really help with that is providing students with some structured means to have those conversations. So conducting a Socratic seminar, structured, structured academic controversy, and any number of the others that are listed there on the right-hand part of the screen there. All of those provide a good framework for having discussions around some of these controversial topics and provide students a way to focus in on the evidence and the research and the, the actual text that you'll be having them focus in on rather than on their own opinions and getting into uh, issues that are gonna be distracting or would derail conversation. So it's really important during this time to start to build a culture in your classroom that's going to be conducive to effective conversations and discussions on these issues. And using these, these structures is a good way to do that. And we've uh, really tried to capture that by creating these, this video series that you see some of there on the left-hand side of the screen um, that walk you through some of the steps in creating uh, a structured discussion like this and provide some video uh, with uh, narrative from teachers from across the country about how they've actually used those structures in their own practice. 
so that you can benefit from their experience. So I'd encourage you to check out this series uh, of uh, teaching controversial issues on our um, election headquarters page where it's, it's currently posted. So I'm gonna turn it over here to Lizzie with Facing History. Thank you so much, Dave. Hi, everybody. And thank you, Casey. Um, so I, I'm Lizzie Carroll. I am here representing Facing History and Ourselves. Um, and you'll hear me touch on many of the same themes that Dave was just speaking to that Casey has brought up. Um, it, you know, if you're familiar with Facing History and Ourselves, you probably know us as an organization that produces curricular content in uh, kind of this historical case study model. That's what we've been doing for over 40 years. Um, and, you know, the themes that we always tend to focus on whenever we're producing an, an historical or, all, or a literary case study um, for colleagues in the English language arts, um, you know, we're thinking about the individual in society, decision making, sort of we and they, how in-groups and out-groups form. Um, we're thinking about the fragility of democracy, how we remember past events and sort of make useful, uh, draw useful lessons for today. We think about um, the power of choosing to participate and the myriad you know, ways that can look for young people as they're beginning to um, grow into civic engagement themselves. Um, so you know, some of the periods of history that we work in that pertain most specifically to the civics space, uh, our case study on the Reconstruction era, a uh, number of different resources focused on the civil rights movement. Um, and, you know, of course, we also have a number of resources pertaining to um, different genocides, including the Holocaust, um, as well as other case studies that just explore identity, um, immigration, and many, many other um, topics as well. Um, if you can move to the next slide, please, Dave. Um, you know, when we think about how all of this maps onto the civics frameworks here in Massachusetts, um, we have this uh, little roadmap. I know you can't see it on the screen, um, but it is available at our website and everything that I'm sharing with you, um, similar to iCivics, if you go to uh, www.facinghistory.org, um, if you don't already have a login, you can create one, it's free, and you can then access everything on our website that you can download PDFs of all our teaching guides. Many of them have landing pages of their own where you can you know, easily access classroom videos, um, handouts, et cetera. Um, we've also started to adapt and create a lot of new resources that can go straight into Google Classroom um, to try to make that smooth and useful for you. Um, but what we've done in the civics space is try to map where our content and the different units, lesson plans, um, and different resources align with whatever your content area is according to, um, according to the, the newer standards. Um, so on the next slide, um, I'm going to tell you about, you know, in addition to all of our curricular content, where we pick up different um, moments from history, um, providing rich primary source documents and a lot of other um, materials to accompany that. You know, we also, like iCivics, um, have produced a number of resources um, to support teachers with practical strategies for how to actually structure conversations in your classroom. Um, especially when we're talking about ethically or emotionally challenging content. We know that it's just really important that the structures are put in place um, to create that safe, brave, reflective learning environment. Um, the Fostering Civil Discourse Guide that we produced in, first in the 2016 presidential election cycle, we just revised in August. Um, and so it, it now is um, updated and sort of situated right in this current moment where we're facing these um, sort of intersecting challenges around the COVID-19 pandemic, um, the ongoing struggle for racial justice, and of course the tensions of this current election cycle. Um, we also have adapted a number of our teaching strategies specifically for remote learning, including contracting, 
and how to use different routines that um, help your students create and maintain that um, sort of community of trust that will allow civil discourse and really any learning about these controversial difficult topics to happen in a constructive way. Um, on the next slide, um, you can see just some screenshots of a lot of what we've been up to in the past couple of years at Facing History is a really intense focus on supporting teachers to teach about current events, uh, whatever they consist of. Um, and you know, our goal is to help teachers confidently broach these challenging topics in the classroom. Dave alluded to the ways that that can be difficult depending on the community that you're teaching in, depending on your own personal identity and how you connect to these different topics as well. Um, and the teaching ideas around current events are updated on a bi-weekly basis. Um, and so this is a sort of constant stream of new content that's uh, directly supporting teachers with practical lesson plans that link to other resources that they can use to address whatever the topic is. Um, so right now, um, of course, if you go to the next slide, please. Um, a significant focus for us in the space of current events, and so many, so many of us, is the election. Um, and we have ha had this landing page up for a few weeks now um, that similarly has been just getting a lot of um, traction and attention. Um, it is designed to support teachers in these weeks leading up to the election. And we've also now added a sort of additional landing page that's focused on the after um, aftermath of the election, whatever happens next week. Um, so we are hoping to sort of support teachers, um, including with resources specifically around media literacy, because we know that that's the way that our students and all of us are processing what's happening, you know, in every day's news cycle. Uh, so it's very, it's critically important that students have the skills to be able to determine, you know, um, whether and how to take in different information from different sources and just to make meaning out of what they're learning and reading about. Um, so we want to support teachers and students in the volatility of this moment. Um, we want to you know, encourage teachers, as Dave said, um, not to shy away from talking about this, um, but rather to you know, feel supported and prepared to do so um, in a way that that is um, safe and constructive for everybody in the class. Um, as we think ahead to next week, we're, we're really um, trying to be deliberate and create opportunities. We have um, actually this week, two events day after tomorrow um, that are kind of still in this pre-election space that you can find at our website, um, facinghistory.org backslash calendar. Um, we also will have events November 10th, November 12th, um, where we are sort of debriefing, processing together, um, whatever has happened between now and then. We just put out a new explainer, which is another tool that we've been developing in the past year or so. Um, one that we've been using a lot has to do with political polarization. Uh, these are documents that provide more in-depth resources around the particular topic. The one we just published is on free and fair elections. What does that mean? What is a free and fair election? What isn't? Uh, we'll be using that to also help us sort of analyze and uh, debrief whatever we see happening um, next week and in the weeks to come as a way to be able to move forward together as a country. Um, so finally, on the next slide, I want to also share um, that we do have sort of our perspective on action civics, um, which of course is directly relevant in our Massachusetts context. Um, and we think about it in this way of bringing together reflection and action. We want to help students prepare to take action on a topic, an area that they care about. Um, so we've developed this toolkit, which is you know, a pretty thick um, guidebook that culminates in examples and possible kind of um, frameworks for what an action civics project can look like and can consist of. We're in the process right now of revising that for a remote learning context. So by December, um, as a lot of teachers are, you know, shifting focus December, January to really plan the projects that they will execute in the latter half of the year. 
um, we'll be putting out those new guidelines and we'll also um, be hosting a workshop uh, specifically around civics in Massachusetts and the civics projects. Um, so I think that's about it. Um, if anybody has questions pertaining to anything you've heard me talk about, um, you can feel free to contact me, um, Elizabeth underscore Carol, C-A-R-R-O-L-L at facinghistory.org. And it's just, it's such a privilege to work together with this coalition because you know we're all bringing different perspectives to these topics, which are so important, especially now. Um, so thanks for letting me be part of today. Hi, everyone. I guess that means it's my turn. <laughs> so again, I'm Kristen Gallus from the Songus Industrial History Center. We are a partnership between the University of Massachusetts Lowell College of Education and Lowell National Historical Park. And our goal is to use informal learning techniques uh, and historic resources uh, to bring history and science to life. And so the last few years, we've been focusing on civics topics in our on-site field trips. Um, converting to virtual field trips this year, um, as well as teacher resources and teacher professional development. So in the slide, you can see some really great photos of teachers and students engaging in our workshops that um, we're trying to take digital as much as possible. So you, our URL is there and you can find out some more information about our field trips there. David, if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, I wanted to highlight some specifically our uh, specifically some of our civic work. Um, we have a series of teacher professional development workshops. We've done three. We have three more sponsored by Mass Humanities called Every Voice Counts, Teaching Civics Through Local History. So again, we're using our sense our um, sort of uh, sense of place. Uh, being in Lowell um, and using it as a microcosm for teaching civics through local history. So we actually have, if you want to spend more time on Zoom, we actually have a workshop tonight, uh, very interesting on becoming a citizen and the importance of voting. And so how does one become a citizen? So what is that immigrant experience like? Um, and it's uh, going to be presented by a woman named uh, Kiara St. Pierre. She's an attorney, an immigration attorney with the International Institute of New England. Um, the week after the election, our session is on the most recent voting rights lawsuit that was in Lowell, where a coalition of immigrants sued the city for um, equitable voting representation. And I would say one, even though they settled the case out of court, they they received more, the city has now more equitable representation um, on its city council and school board. So you can learn more about that then. And then the final one of the series is called Activating Youth Voices. And we'll hear from um, Mike Nagel, who was a Massachusetts Teacher of the Year at Lowell, um, about his work with his students at the Pine Arts School. And then Jeff Foster, who's with UTEC, who is also one of the partners in um, MCLC uh, and their Vote 17 initiative. So really try to do a series of, of civics topics. Um, and each one, uh, you could see the photograph in the middle with the little megaphone has an accompanying um, Google site of historic documents aligned with the theme and then um, a series of writing prompts that go along with it. So it's not a full lesson plan. It's, um, uh, it's the concept we've developed called remote learning modules, which is a Google site of documents, images, um, and sometimes videos accompanied by writing prompts for teachers to plug into their Google sites. Um, so if you could go to the next uh, slide, uh, you can see a few more of our remote learning modules. Again, these are for teachers to, to apply um, in their own curriculum. They match up to the frameworks uh, for the social studies frameworks, and you can see that on our website. Um, we have one on enslaved labor and their connection uh, to the cotton industry in Lowell, uh, the Penacook people of the Merrimack Valley, and also one on mill girls in addition to uh, the series that we have on civics right now. And then the final slide um, is our virtual field trips, of which we're very proud. If you've ever heard about a Saga Center program, you know that our focus is on engaging the whole student, uh, mind, body, and spirit. And so we're trying to do that in a virtual format. Um, so we were using, doing our experiments online, we're using historic items. We filmed videos of, of our colleagues as actors, acting out the roles of mill girls. Um, and it's very exciting. Uh, we're developing a few that specifically focus on, one that fo focuses on civics for, um, for eighth graders and using the, the town meeting format. 
um, and a social justice issue. Uh, and I just want to share a quick story that happened in our, our field trip today. We were talking about the Mill Girls, and this was with a fourth grade class, and we were talking about how Mill Girls protested for better working conditions. And one student asked about protest and violence, and if any of the historical protests were as violent as protests are now. And I thought that was a really interesting connection that they were making about that protests are violent <laughs> and he wanted to know what that what that looked like in the past and if it was the same as it is now um so really these field trips are allowing kids to make those past present historical connections um using social justice issues and civics issues um so that's all for me at the moment um that's our url i encourage you to take a look um my information is on the website if you'd like to reach out to me thank you Hi everyone. Uh, thanks again, Casey, for, for leading this workshop. Uh, I'm Jason Lofty from Generation Citizen, uh, and the primary focus of our program is Acts and Civics. So you'll see here what we kind of call our pseudo mascot, the GC Advocacy Hourglass, that kind of takes you through the Acts and Civics process. Uh, and I put up here the DESE Civics Project Guidebook uh, because we work closely with DESE on providing um, suggestions and support in crafting the, the student-led civic project guidebook that you might be referencing uh, when implementing uh, civics projects. So just to talk briefly about the hourglass and the action civics process, we work largely with identifying community issues and having students lead the work of identifying issues they care about. They will narrow down to a single issue to focus on for a semester or a year or however long a teacher determines and do research on that issue to figure out a course of action. And the key for us is that they are taking real action and making systemic policy goal uh, plans so that the work that they're doing goes systemically and reaches out for a sustainable long-term future. So you'll have students working on state bills, uh, changing city ordinances, working on even a student handbook policy or curriculum changes uh, that will have long lasting effects in the community for students and the people they live with. So generally what we see in that first half is researching an issue and then the second half is them actually taking action, reaching out to community members uh, and our staff support teachers along the way uh, one of the pieces that we pride ourselves on is that we're not just delivering a curriculum, we are coaching you throughout the process in the entire semester, um, visiting you virtually. Uh, in the before times, we would go in the in-person classroom visits. So that's a piece that's uh, a large portion of our program and curriculum is supporting you as teachers. Uh, if you can go to the next slide. So some of the resources that we've provided that are open source right now that pertain to the Acts and Civics during this time of working virtually is what we call Democracy Does and Pause. And you'll see uh, a link down below that takes you to a site. And what we have here as stated are, are lesson plans for teachers, students, and families to take sort of an ad adaptation of our fuller curriculum and do it in, in smaller chunks and in bite-sized pieces in, in virtual settings to still feel like you are connected to the community and taking action in a, in a civically way. Thanks, Casey. Next slide. Uh, recently, we've, with the timing of the election, we've put out a Go Beyond the Ballot website. And this is a collection of election resources but also prompts for, for taking action civically, uh, as well as skill building lessons. And what you'll see here uh, is a sort of snapshot of our site with a civic action toolkit, uh, lesson guides, and a series of election resources. Uh, we cover a number of topics such as uh, voting suppression, um, the fundamentals of election, debates, uh, so there's a number of different categories that have ready-made lessons as well as podcasts 
uh, and videos to, to explore to, to implement with your students. Uh, and one more slide, Casey, I believe. And if you're you're interested in kind of like how do I start kind of understanding acts and civics and what does it mean to to teach acts and civics, we now offer a free five hour self paced online teacher prof professional development course called Kickstart Acts and Civics, and this can kind of take you through the hourglass approach that I showed earlier and kind of gives you uh, a little bit of a taste of what it means to implement each portion of this in your classroom. Uh, it does provide a certificate of completion at the end. Uh, and anyone who does complete it, we can um, contact you about working in a deeper partnership for teacher training. And if you're interested in reaching out uh, to connect more about Generation Citizens Curriculum Program, you can reach directly to me uh, my email is Jason underscore Lofty. Uh, oh, apologies, J Lofty at generationcitizen.org. And I believe I'm kicking it over to Joe from Bridgewater State. Hi. Uh, yes, I'm Joe Hoffman from Bridgewater State University. And I'm just here to talk about um, what were developed for teachers um, enhancing their learning. Um, with regard to the revision of the curriculum frameworks that happened a couple years ago, and then they were released and adopted. And the um, micro-credentials that were developed, I think they had a good term for them, the on-demand PD. <laughs> They're self micro-credentials are self-paced um, opportunities for teachers to earn professional development points and enhance their own civic learning in order to be able to um, engage at the different grade levels with the enhancements of civics education that were made in the curriculum frameworks. Um, the slide you see right here is a newly added uh, micro-credential based around, as a companion uh, micro-credential based around the micro uh, based around the Massachusetts Chronicles, which um, which is uh, every school building, public school building in the state of Massachusetts got a delivery of a class pack of these of this book called Massachusetts Chronicles. It was uh, developed as a in partnership with the Plymouth 400 Commission. Um, and it's a it's a really great interactive, um, you know, I, I'm not sure if anyone on this session right now is a, a is teach is a teacher right now, but if you are and you get to your school building on one of the days that you have to be re teaching remotely in the building, look for the uh, box, the delivery of the Mass Massachusetts Chronicles um, in, your, in your building and pull one out and you can see the, the resource it is. It, it's, it's really cool. And also I, I won't go into that too much because Rob Powers who presented earlier in this conference did a whole session on the Massachusetts Chronicles. Was, he was a big part of it, of developing it and the educator's guide that goes along with it. Um, Dave, if you'll just uh, click on the link. Okay, so um, beyond the Chronicles, um, Dave, if you'd click on the see all civics education credentials offered. Bridgewater um, is like hosts and it is a, um, I guess hosts, right? It hosts these badges for educators to, uh, to earn. And if you'd scroll down, Dave, you'll see that um, they do follow, um, keep going, I'll show you the different ones. So, so right, so we have, um, a small a writer's team worked over the, the better course of a year to, to develop these micro credentials and so there were school administrators there was curriculum coordinators there was um, some folks from organizations that are part of nclc that were part of this writing team and the main the goal was to enhance uh, teachers learning in the, in the area of civics that they are responsible for teaching um, with regard to the curriculum frameworks and the revision that happened. So um, if you keep scrolling down, Dave, you'll see that there's, there's a few here that um, align directly with some of the things, some of the themes and topics 
Um, there's the Chronicles one is back on there. And also the, this last Massachusetts state and local government is aimed toward the elementary enhancements to curriculum frameworks and around the, the uh, fifth grade level in terms of the introduction to the areas of state and local government that are um, expectations in the frameworks um, at the elementary level for local government and state government. Um, if you don't mind just scrolling up just for just to the um, the description of, of how to access, there you go. Like, so in, in general, if you go to um, this site, it, it gives you exactly what to do in order to um, get engaged and start going with this self pace There's no timing on it. Also is co no cost for earning these. And Bridgewater State is a um, provider of professional development points uh, approved by um, DESE. So we'll be the ones offering and um, presenting teachers with their, with their professional development points. So I think that's all for now. If you have any questions about any of it, you can uh, email me directly, which is just joe.hoffman, H-O-F-F-M-A-N, at bridgew.edu. Thank you. And thanks for letting me be a part of this. And I love being a part of the Massachusetts Civic Learning Coalition as well. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. And just so folks know, too, our last slide has all the um, emails with uh, everybody in the presentation. So oh, um, we have that, too. I just want to throw that up there as well. Great. All right, Michael. Hi. Uh, thanks, Joe. Those were really super helpful uh, resources. All of these have been really great. Um, I, again, my name is Michael Blau. Um, I've, I've been with the Democratic Knowledge Project or the DKP for uh, about three and a half years now. And uh, since we're a little bit newer to the scene, I thought I'd get uh, an overview of, of, of what we do. Um, we're based at Harvard University. We're a K-12, or, or sorry, K-16 uh, civic education provider, though most of our effort goes to the K-12 space. Um, but we offer professional development resources, uh, curriculum develop, uh, development, um, and uh, workshops for educators, which I can say more about uh, later if you have questions, um, assessment tools and services, all in support of education for constitutional democracy. And so we're uh, uh, headed by our, uh, our fearless director, Danielle Allen, who's a, a, a political philosopher and a classicist and uh, the world's foremost expert, expert on the Declaration of Independence. And she's been able to pull together multiple uh, uh, of her projects of past lives into one single entity for civic education. And our uh, main thrust has been to create a eighth grade civics course, um, a full, full year course um, uh, based on the, the new state standards for, uh, for civics. And uh, we've been able to actually create uh, that, the, the units for that course, the curriculum resources for that course and pilot it last year. And we're continuing to pilot this year. And along with that, we've been able to create and make public uh, a few good resources. I'll say just a, a word about our approach and how it's a little bit different. Uh, you'll see on the left-hand side of this uh, slide um, that our approach of, of, of civic education, what we're trying to do in our eighth grade civics uh, uh, um, course and our other work with our other curricular resources uh, in high school and some work in fifth grade, some work in seventh grade is really based on um, a lot of the core uh, good elements of project-based learning you might you might notice. So we're really uh, focused on um, making sure that students walk away with content and, and philosophical foundations of, of democracy, U.S. history, et cetera, but also uh, really deeply engaged in, in learning civics by doing civics. And I think Jason mentioned this earlier, we, we were partnered with GC and DESE um, two years ago now uh, on uh, helping put together the guidebook for um, student-led civics projects. And so we, that's also a core component of our, of our curriculum. And we have some online materials that we can share about that in a, in a second. But you also notice that um, some of those core elements um, that we try to hit on in all, of our, in, our, in all of our curriculum materials really go back to uh, these components of authenticity, student voice and choice, reflection, um, creating shared projects through uh, 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 collaboration, critique and revision, and uh, being able to go through uh, um, a process um, through sustained inquiry. And that's what we really uh, are trying to build at. And that's what we're trying to pilot. Um, I, I will say that we have a whole lot of resources that 
uh, we're working on and, and supporting teachers through right now. We're working with 33 different teachers in 14 different districts in the Commonwealth. Um, it's a little bit closed right now because we are adapting and researching and studying uh, all of our resources as they're live in the wild. But some of these things um, that you'll see around the corner, the edges are, are, are things that we're starting to make public. Uh, and I'll talk about those in a second. But one is the 10 questions for change makers framework. Uh, I th kind of analogous to what Jason showed you of uh, the advocacy hourglass. We've been, Danielle's been developing a, a ten, the 10 questions framework for young change makers for uh, about 10 years now. And that comes up uh, relatively uh, frequently throughout our curriculum. We're really into journaling. Uh, we have civics journals and we make those available to our pilots. We can make those available. Those will be soon to come, um, though they're not quite resource ready for public consumption yet. We use a lot of thinking routines. Uh, we do uh, simulations, um, uh, it, which is a really core part of, of uh, the active learning process, um, presentations, um, and uh, students write their own declaration of independence in, their, in, in the unit three. And so I can share some of that um, information about that. Um, and also, also say the simulation that we have that's probably most interesting is something I can share is a, is a video game that we've built around the Declaration of Independence. So, um, so those are some of the some of the our core uh, um, uh, our core components of of who we are. If you go to the next uh, slide, um, you can check out our website. I also put the the uh, the link in in, in the uh, chat here. It's also on the MCLC website. But a few of these. Um, components that we've piloted and built out for the remote uh, uh, world that we now live in uh, for COVID times. We've now put those on the MCLC website um, and we have them on our own website. But one of these is um, really based on our unit six, um, which is our student-led civics project unit, which kind of is a capstone to our eighth grade year. And this is off, honestly pretty relevant and could be used in most high school grades. Um, for uh, social studies students, um, but it follows the, 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 the six main stages of a student-led civics project, um, but it's a Google site, it's student-facing, it's interacting, uh, interactive. Um, we've had a few teachers um, that have, have used this in the last spring, and we're gonna revamp this and use this again uh, with our pilot cohort, but it is, this is available on our website now as a resource. We've also recently built out, as everyone is interested in teaching the election, we've put together uh, 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 with, with our team of, of research assistants and uh, uh, Harvard Gov students and Danielle, we were able to put together our little mini uh, unit on elections, um, which is uh, really great. Uh, our pilot teachers are using it now. That's um, open and I think that should be up on the MCLC website um, as well, but if it's not, you can get it off our website. Um, so those are some of the things that we have piloted and uh, have opened up. The other thing we're really excited about opening up uh, to the public and is under, again, uh, some revisions, but it, it, you can jump on it and play it, is Portrait of a Tyrant. And this is a, a long project that we've been working on for probably about six years now. Um, it's really taking Danielle Allen's book on our declaration and turning it into a, a video game. A lot of students, when they think about video games, they may have a, uh, they may be thinking like Call of Duty, Donkey Kong, uh, things that I think about. Uh, so we, we've actually, it kind of changed it that, uh, a little bit in terminology to have students think about it more as an ex a learning experience, an immersive experience, or an interactive uh, graphic novel. But it basically follow, falls around a protagonist uh, on, the, on the right there of the slide, Brianna, who is um, a, a, a free woman of color in the 1770s, um, and she travels around the colonies and interacts with the grievances um, that are listed in the uh, Declaration of Independence. And that's kind of how Danielle's book um, is written. It is around the grievances and what, what, um, what a government looks like when it's not protecting the rights of its, of its citizens and uh, what folks did and, in the past and what folks, how that might relate to what folks might do in the present around uh, reclaiming those, those rights. So there are, I believe six episodes now um, this is again on our website. You can you can play it. Students can interact with it. There's a lot of a lot of text. There's a whole lot of research in this. There's a lot of good primary sources. Um, but it is a it's a really wonderful um, uh, learning immersive experience for students to explore, as if you were exploring 
the uh, you know the Tongass museums, right? It's 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 like a museum uh, in in in, a, in that way. It's a it's a it's a adventure game, um, so students can can pick and choose and have a lot of voice and choice in there. So that's available to you as well. Um, next slide. Just make a quick note to this. This was up and now it's being revamped, so it's, the course is no longer being um, offered, but it is. Um, under revision and will be offered by the end of this year is a Harvard X course, Civ 101, which is about civic engagement in our democracy. It's for adult learners. Uh, we know that a lot of our pilot teachers and, and a lot of teachers uh, across the country and, 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 and even in, in Massachusetts haven't had as much of a, a, a content-driven learning experience in uh, American civic education or constitutional democracy. And so we have uh, teamed up with Harvard X and uh, Danielle and our team have put together this course uh, for adult learners, mainly teachers, but any adult learner uh, will be available to um, in, the, in, the, in the near future. So it's an online self-paced um, introduction course to the core concepts of our, it roughly, you can see that it follows kind of our units uh, that we've, we have for our, um, our eighth grade uh, course, but it's, it's, it's for um, anyone and everyone. And hopefully that will be up and running. Um, knock on wood uh, with the COVID restrictions of recording, but uh, it'll be up and running this at the end of this year. Um, and that's that's about all I have to say. I know that we're running really short on time. Um, so um, I will hand it over to Dave or anyone else that wants to run uh, questions and answers. All right, thanks. Thanks, folks. Uh, I know there was a lot there. I'm going to stop uh, recording now. Uh, that day, uh, if we could just go to the last slide, just to get uh, folks' uh, emails on there. Um, yes. Just be... a moment, Casey. Yep, gotcha. <clears throat> awesome. And what you're uh, seeing, folks, right here are all the emails. If you'd like to get in further contact with us please just shoot us an email. We're, we're around computers. So I'd uh, love to get back to you and have those conversations. Okay. Uh, yeah. if, if also anyone... just dropped a link to the shared folder for this session that includes this PowerPoint. So that's in the chat. You can access that shared folder and have access to all the links that everybody's described today.